Okay, so we're going to cover how to configure ODBC to connect to a back-end Microsoft SQL Server. Okay, for this example, um, I have two shortcut icons on the desktop. And one is the Microsoft Access 2010 icon, and the other is the Data Sources ODBC icon. Um, I'm going to be using Microsoft Access to access the data once the ODBC connection has been made. So the first step is to go ahead and launch the Data Sources uh, Control Panel Applet. And, um, from this source administrator window, um, you basically have multiple tabs. The two most ta the two most common tabs you'll be using is either the user DSN or the system DSN. Um, both of these tabs can be used to connect to a backend system. The difference is that the user DSN tab um, will expose these data sources to the currently logged on user versus the system DSN, where if you create any here, they'll be available to any user that's logged on to this computer. For this example, I'll go ahead and create a user DSN, and I'll go uh, by starting uh, by clicking the Add button. And we want to connect to a SQL Server, so I'll select that. Okay, we got to give this connection a name. I'll just call it um, ITG SQL Test. You can give it a description if you like, and need to specify the SQL Server name. Click Next. Okay, so you can connect to the SQL Server by either using your currently logged on credentials, which is um, the first option here using Windows NT authentication, or you can specify your username and password to connect to the backend SQL Server. I already have a user account and password defined on SQL, so I'll go ahead and choose that option, and I'll type in my uh, credentials here. Click Next. I'm going to go ahead and change the default database. Rather than connect it to master, I'll connect to a test database that I've already created. Um, no other options need to be changed. I'll click Next. And um, on this screen, unless you want to save uh, queries and statistics to a log file, um, you can go ahead and just click on Finish. If you like, you can review your um, configuration and test the data source by clicking on this button. You notice that uh, the test completed successfully, which means that I was able to make a successful connection to the SQL Server. Uh, click OK. You'll notice that our connection is now listed as a user data source, and hit OK to finish. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and launch uh, Microsoft Access 2010 so we can access our data on the SQL Server. And I'm going to go ahead and create a blank database. Now I'm not going to store any data uh, in this local um, access file, so I'll go ahead and close this table. And we need to go ahead and get to our external data, so we'll click on the external data tab. And since this is an old DBC connection, we'll launch that wizard. Now once we launch the wizard, um, we have two options. Either we can import the data into a table, into uh, this access database, or um, just go ahead and link to the data source in the back end without storing any local data. That's what I'm going to choose. I hit OK. Okay. Go ahead and select your data source. We're going to go onto the machine data source tab, and I'm going to select the data source that I just created in the uh, previous steps. Click OK. Type in your credentials. Click OK. Okay. Once I make the connection, SQL Server will provide me with a list of all the objects that this user has access to. In this case, I have a lot of objects uh, presented to me because this test user was created with um, vast amounts of uh, rights and privileges. But for this, uh, for this example, I'll go ahead and just link to the customers table and click OK. And you'll notice that once I connect, um, it shows an externally linked table called DBO customers. And if I double click that, I'll have access to the table on the back end server. Now, depending on the rights that this user has, um, you can either just select data from the table, um, you can insert new data, you can delete data, or you can just update existing data. Um, for instance, if I want to add a record to this um, uh, database, I can. Um, I'll just go ahead and add some data. some test information here.
So this user in particular, aside from being able to insert data, can also delete data. So I can right-click, for instance, a row and delete record. So again, um, this data is actually, um, the changes uh, to the data are actually being made on the SQL Server itself. Uh, none of this data is being stored in this local access uh, database file. I'm just using um, access to uh, interface with uh, SQL. That's it for this demonstration of configuring ODBC to connect to a SQL Server. Thank you for watching.